Good afternoon everybody, Carl Baker here, enjoying the uh, bit of sunshine, bit of spring sunshine, there's not been a lot of it recently, and every time there has been it's when I've had to do something else, so I've had birthdays and people to see and all that kind of stuff and not been able to get out on the bike because I've been too busy carrying presents around in the back of the car, which is boring. Speaking of uh, things where you have presents, brings me on to my topic for today. Oh, this is a nice new bit of road, isn't it? Ooh. Anybody meeting up at um, No White Lines? Oh, I don't know what those are then. Anybody meeting me at Morrison's at 9 o'clock on the uh, 23rd of April? <coughs> plug, plug, plug for my uh, ride out through Yorkshire. We'll be going on this nice new bit of road here. Yippee, it's lovely. Because by then they'll probably have dug it up. Anyway, round to my topic of today because I've digressed before I've even started. And uh, the reason it's related to presents is it's from a while back now. Quite a while back now. It's a uh, month and a half ago. was Valentine's Day. And uh, Valentine's Day always, I think, is a... It's all right. I mean, you swap your presents, don't you? Um, you give some money to their greetings cards companies. Grr. And you're in this weird position of having given somebody a gift that is less valuable than if you'd given it on any other day. Because if you give somebody a gift when they're not expecting it, it gives a, a feeling of more love, more surprise, than if you give somebody a gift on a day that is mandated by Clinton's cards <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be a time of spending money. But anyway, Valentine's Day. So you give your presents, it's alright, you know. That's good for the man, good for the woman. The bit where it becomes awkward is, what do you do on the night? Now, you can go for a meal, everyone can go for a meal, that's easy, isn't it? But, meals on Valentine's Day are expected, so you have to pay double. And you're lucky to get a table at a restaurant. Now, what we decided to do this year was go see a film. And of course, I like, well, quite an array of films, actually. I like uh, some crimey type ones. I like my uh, Goodfellas and Casino, that type of thing. I like the slightly unusual ones, like Memento, or Being John Malkovich. I love Being John Malkovich and Memento, actually. I can watch them repeatedly and never get bored of them. Um, but Mrs. C, she's not the same as me. She's not. She does like a horror. We both like a horror. But she does like a bit of... Uh, a bit of, not, yeah, not really rom-com, but you know, a bit romantic, a bit kind of girly film. So, we we went with the um, the kind of the middling, the bit of rom, bit of com, bit of horror, and we went to see Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Basically, it's the story of Pride and Prejudice. Uh, with the added benefit of zombies. So you've got the romantic bit, you know, for the for the ladies. And I don't mean to be sexist here. I know that some men like romantic stuff and some women like the other stuff, so, you know. But in general, you've got the romantic stuff for the ladies and you've got the zombies for the men. Hey, how cool is that? So we went to see that and I, I think it was brilliant. As a film, it's not brilliant, but it's pretty good. It was a good laugh. There were a good laugh, a few laugh out loud moments, and a bit of gore here and there. Mrs. C left the cinema saying to me, "I'm really sorry. What are you sorry for?" She said, "I don't think there were enough zombies for you, were there?" Ah, I think the zombie count was acceptable, and I had a good laugh. So, you know, all in all, it was a good Valentine's Day. But anyway, it got me thinking, and I was thinking, there's got to be a lot more films that would be vastly improved by adding zombies so I thought I'll come up with a top five and if you want to add to this then uh, please do in the comments or better still do a video so here are my top five films that would be improved by zombies da -da 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 -da. so at number five we have Pretty Woman now all in all Pretty Woman isn't too bad a film for a watch you know it's definitely not a man's film but I could kind of live with it I, I wouldn't choose to watch it you know if 
if I went to my DVD stack and thought, right, what am I watching? Pretty Woman is probably in the low 200s, 300s. But it has one saving grace, it has a Lotus Esprit in it, and a Lotus Esprit car of the 80s, awesome bit of machinery. It just doesn't have enough Lotus Esprit. So I think Pretty Woman could be improved drastically with zombies. If you've not seen it, I, yeah, you're not going to understand the bit I'm talking about, but there's the divot scene. Go out and stamp in the divots on the polo pitch. Beware the steaming divot. I think that, that particular scene with all the people around watching polo, turn half of them into zombies, you got yourself a bloodbath. Awesome. So that's my number five. At number four, a film that to me was about two people meeting twice and talking boring nonsense. When Harry Met Sally. I'm sure there is a deeper meaning to When Harry Met Sally. I just haven't found it and I can't be bothered to look. Because I find the whole film mind-numbingly dumb. Dumb, dull even. However, it does have that scene. Everybody knows the scene. It's the only scene probably that most people know about When Harry Met Sally. The fake orgasm scene where uh, she sat at a table in a restaurant I don't know, it might even be on Valentine's Day, I don't know <laughs> probably isn't but sat at a table in a restaurant talking about faking orgasms and she fakes her orgasm now if at the end of that scene instead of carrying on talking she looked down and the zombie had been eating her innards now that would be a whole different type of moaning and much more a manly film see how, many, how this works on so many levels so my number three the classic with Gerard Doobie Doo is Green Card and when I say classic I use the word inadvisedly some people love Green Card I what is it even about it's about a, a French guy who goes to America and wants to stay there and pretends to be married <laughs> I can't go on any longer because I fear I may fall asleep and crash absolutely dull. Now I can't even pick a scene out of Green Card because it is such a cure for insomnia that I can't remember any of them. I just remember it being intensely dull. Intensely dull. And anything that intensely dull would be improved by zombies. I would suggest we use the zombies from 28 Days Later. The fast ones. They were cool. Number two. Now this one could be controversial. This is a film that will be improved by having zombies in it that actually already has zombies in it. And the film is lost in translation. How the star of such classics like Ghostbusters and, uh, and classics that changed the language, that actually introduced a new phrase to the language in Groundhog Day, could be in this pile of drivel about some people who go to Japan and don't like it there and who are bored well you weren't as bored as I was watching it what a, but it was zombies Scarlett Johansson I think it is she might as well have been a zombie but not of the 28 day later kind of the uh, the original zombie mindless drone and that brings me to my number one now this is quite personal so a lot of people won't agree with this one because it's probably got a lot more action in probably I don't know I hated it probably got a lot more action in than uh, some of the others especially Lost in Translation Dirty Dancing Dirty Dancing oh please a teenage girl who to me looks far too young and probably was far too young by the character's age with a middle aged almost man oh he wasn't middle aged but he was certainly a lot older but it was just truly a female film. Awful. I want to be a dance. Oh, please. But the girlfriend was obsessed with this film and would watch it continuously. Her dad had a BBC Model B computer and I would try and sneak out the room and play Elite. <laughs> I hated that film. And I think, you know, there might be some saving graces to it, but I think the whole experience of being forced to watch it and it being on so often really just destroyed any chance it's got of uh, of ever being liked by me however 
That final bit where she takes that leap, she leaps upwards, kind of solid as a as a plank of wood. Kind of like that planking thing that was on the internet a while back. And she's uh, she lands in the hero's arms and he holds her above his head. Just imagine how much that would be better for us men folk if he'd then taken a bite out of her stomach and all the intestines had fallen out because he was a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. You tell me what your top five would be. And if you can't think of any, then what I'll do is I will challenge you. Now, this really only applies to men and women who, who like men type films. Again, there is a crossover. We know there's a crossover. If you've got that type of uh, film, film favour, or film appeal, or, you know, you like the horrors and the thrillers and the zombie films more than you like the romantic comedies and, and the worse, just the romantic with no comedy, then I challenge you, find me a rom-com or a romantic film that would not be improved with zombies. Maybe vampires or werewolves. They'll all do. Thanks for watching, everyone. Ride safe. And I'll talk to you all again soon.